Hi, welcome to Tessera's Nerf Room. So if you've been nerfing for a while, you'll probably know that Hasbro has had a foothold in one thing specifically, the semi-automatic flywheel-powered magazine-fed blaster right here. This nugget right here is the Strife. Everybody knows what it is, pretty much everybody likes it, it's just a universally well-received blaster, and it honestly was never dethroned. But there was a time where people thought that something would dethrone it. Th this one. This one right here. So today we're going to be taking a look at the Dart Zone Spectrum to see if it actually got close to succeeding at dethroning the Strife. Also, you can do this with it. So already, it's got a good start. For a bit of background, this blaster was released in 2020. Same year that we got the Nexus Pro. What a polarizing blaster that was, and pretty much the same here. This is another blaster where it's like, you either really love it, or you really, 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 really don't. But this blaster right here is actually pretty interesting because it directly was competing with Hasbro's Strife, which was a pretty big deal considering that nothing has ever really dethroned the Strife before. I mean, people have said that some blasters were Strife killers, but none of them actually succeeded at doing that because the Strife is just so unbelievably popular and there were so many mod kits for it, and it was such a perfect compact little platform to modify off of. Even for a stock little flywheel blaster, it was really good. But this blaster succeeded at one thing that the Strife could not do, being a better stock flywheel blaster. Emphasis on stock, we'll get back to that in a moment. Wow, a whole bunch of attachments just appeared on my spectrum. Starting off with the design, this is with all the included stuff it comes with. It comes with a foregrip that actually folds just like that modulus one. It comes with a cool looking scope, and it comes with an adjustable stock that you will never, ever use. And you'll see why in a moment. But if we actually take a look at the blaster without all of these attachments on it... Yeah, it's a strife with a barrel on it. Like... Le legitimately look at it. It looks like the Strife, but it has a barrel on it. It actually looks a whole lot like the Storm Charge, but we already kind of delve into that can of worms when I unbox the Storm Charge on stream. If you weren't there for that, then make sure to check into my streams, because I stream like once a week or so. Now with that shameless plug out of the way, let's talk about the design, which I think looks really, really cool with or without all of the attachments that it comes with. It is a very sort of retro firearm looking thing like you'd see in a Star Wars film or something like that. Very retro, very space age, and it takes me back to the early end strike days or even all the way back to the 90s where they tried to over exaggerate the coolness of their blasters by making them look super cool and like you would see in a, in a sci-fi film or something like that. It is a very fun Fun design. I really like the way this blaster looks. Honestly, it kind of reminds me of that one SpongeBob episode where they kept those like pump net guns and they're going around alien hunting. The aliens are projecting our memories onto the environment. I don't I don't know if you guys remember that, but it doesn't really matter. Let's go on to the ergonomics. It's got a grip and it comes with a foregrip and a stock, so I'm gonna be judging all three. The main grip is not too bad. It's a little bit too small. I think that the grip could be quite a bit bigger, and I do think it's a little bit too sharp of an edge around the corners, at least on the front side. The back side is pretty rounded, but the whole front end of the grip is a little bit too sharp for my liking. As for the foregrip, it's big, it's comfy, you can get your whole hand around it, and then with a push of a button, it turns into a very nice, sturdy foregrip. And I emphasis on sturdy, it doesn't fall off for one specific reason, which I'll get into in a moment. And it's also the world's funnest little fidget toy. As for the stock, it is, oh my gosh, it's worse than the Retaliator! How is it worse than the Retaliator? I have never used this thing as a stock. If I ever actually put a stock on this, which I rarely do, I usually just take the stock off the Villainator and put it on here, which is probably what everybody else does because everybody knows that this stock is way too short, even in its fully extended position. This is as long as it gets and it's still only half my arm's length. It's too short. It's basically the same as the Retaliator stock, and it is terrible. Why did they do this? The actual stock itself is pretty comfortable, though, and the cheek rest is alright, even though, again, it is way too short. 
I just don't know why it's so short, but we're going to ignore that really quick and take these attachments off. Well, the scope looks pretty cool, even though it's just a, a plastic scope. But let's take a look at the foregrip really quick. There are two buttons on this. The one on the front obviously adjusts it, but the one on the back actually locks the foregrip. The rail has this nub built in, actually it's over here, and on the actual piece, there's like a little locking nut right there. So when it slides in, it clicks and locks and it's very tight. It's not gonna come off. So even though the grip folds and is really wobbly, it is a sturdy, solid handhold that you can get a pretty good grip on even if you don't have the stock on it, which is a brilliant idea and it was done very well. The other pro to that is the fact that now we have a Nerf rail compatible angled foregrip like this, which is not something we've seen before. And because of that locking mechanism, it fits very tightly and snuggly onto rails, even though it doesn't have the little locking mechanism on the bottom like other nerf attachments do. So you can put this on any blaster and use it pretty well. And I end up using this on a lot of different blasters, not just limited to the Spectrum. What about the triggers though? This blaster's got three of them and two of them are very good. It's got a rev trigger which is pretty clicky and it clicks in, a main trigger which is so good. I love the main trigger on this. And the mag release which is awesome. It's a paddle mag release even though it's a little bit too far away from my finger. I, a little bit too far away from the grip for my leg but it's cool nonetheless you can grab it with your thumb and pull it down I do not like the rev trigger it's too big and what I mean by that is it actually goes over the figure trial and it goes down into where your third finger is gonna be so oftentimes I end up squeezing my middle and third fingers together to pull the rev trigger down when I really don't need to because the rev trigger like rubs against my third finger and it feels really weird I don't know why they made the rev trigger so big why did you do that, Dart Zone? Like, you were very close, because the rev trigger itself is very nice, but this line right here where it stops on the finger trail should have been where the rev trigger got cut off, but instead they made it really big for some bizarre reason. But how does this blaster work? Well, it's a magazine-fed semi-automatic blaster. You put the magazine in, you rev, it's semi-auto. The rev up time on this blaster is really good, surprisingly, especially for a stock blaster like this. It is very comparable to something like, well, not really the Prometheus, but more of like the Nemesis. It's way faster than the Strife stock rev up time, that's for sure. It revs up pretty fast. And the magazine insertion and release, while being incredibly smooth, is also pretty difficult because of the shape of this magwell, but you could probably get a 3D printed attachment to put on it. Also, there's a jam door on this side, which is very fun to fiddle with. This blaster has got a lot of things that are just fun to fidget with. It's like a fidget, a Nerf fidget toy. So while traditionally in firing demos, I use an 18 round magazine. I feel like using the 30 drum today. So you're gonna get more darts out of this firing demo. With that said, let's just get into it. So while I could say that the Dart Zone Spectrum is worth your money just because you can do that with it all day, I want to answer the question of whether I think this is better or, the, or worse than the Strife. I think it's about the same. I would personally take a Strife over it just because the Strife is a little bit easier to modify and there are tons upon tons of mod kits for it that just don't exist for the Spectrum. Even though you definitely can modify this to a ridiculous degree, not quite as much as the Strife. At the same time though, the Spectrum is not at all a bad blaster. It is extremely good, especially for $20 and it'll definitely get you where you're going. My only real complaint with it is the annoyingly big rev trigger and the fact that AT round magazines have a weird inconsistency problem where you put it in and then look the, the paddle mag release presses against it and it's a little bit more finicky to take out you kind of have to push the magazine forward and then it slides out which I shouldn't have to do but you can fix that with a 3d printed part but my point still stands why do I have to 3d print a part just to fix a problem that dart zone could have easily fixed out of the box but overall my opinion on this blaster is pretty positive I really like the spectrum and if you see one at Walmart definitely give it a shot with that said, I'll provide a buy link in the description below if you guys want to buy one. Thanks for watching!